they, they will sound, they will, 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 the song will sound, it says, unto the end. Unto death. Death. Yes. Death. Who wants to die here? Yes. Yeah, so we're talking about the cross. He said, carry your cross daily. So it's not talking about uh, physical, physical death or something like that. Uh, uh, he has overcome death. Amen? So he said, the Lord is our guide. It's our guide. Our guide. It's as you experience death that you, you experience life. Um, it's as you experience death that you experience life. I, I will explain that. Um, uh, so he says, "Is our guide even unto death?" So it's not talking about uh, death in that sense of dying. The, the, no, that's not it. Second Timothy chapter one verse ten. So, from this uh, scripture here, when did Christ abolish death? When? When did he abolish death? When he appeared, right? So, it's a past tense. But now, okay, let's read from verse 8. Let's just read it, then there's some truths just on the peak. It is a reality now. Now. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor but be the partakers of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Before the world began. But turn now tells us something. But, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, who had abolished death and had brought life and immortality to, to light through the gospel. Amen? Amen, amen. Amen. So he has abolished debt. So let's define debt. What is debt? You can give us definition of debt. There are many definitions. Or let's not say definitions now. Let's look at what do we what word do we can we point to and say this is debt? This is debt. This manifestation of debt. Cessation of life. Cessation of life. So uh, that one very that one at the end. <laughs> it's okay. It's at the end. It's a spiritual death too. Cessation of life. So it's very yeah. sin. That is sin. So he said the wages of sin. When sin don't don't get, it won't get in salary. Uh, when, uh, the wages when the sin is has come to a point, it brings forth death. So death is sin. Death is sickness. Death is headache. Uh, death is failure. Uh, death is maladies. Uh, death is failure to have fulfillment in life. So when all those things are quantified, uh, sorrow is death. The, uh, grief is death. So he said, it carried away our griefs. Sicknesses. Sicknesses. It carried away our maladies. And uh, so all those ones are all manifesting of, of death. So when you read the scripture, you don't have any of it any longer. Amen. So when you are having it there, you must enforce this. Yes. When you have light through the gospel, oh. those conditions terminate. Amen. In the name of Jesus. He had abolished death. Not he will, he has. Isn't in the past. He did it. He carried away our graves. He carried away our soul. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Anxiety, depression, failure to have fulfillment in marriage, bad 
and difficult and painful menstrual circles. He abolished it. Amen. Not he will, but he did it. Amen. And had brought life. As he dealt with those conditions, he brought life and immortality to light. When you read the scripture, you know there's life and immortality available for you. That's what it says. He brought it to light. He had made manifest. So when Christ came, the first time, he did it. Who has abolished debt? Abolished debt. Debt is abolished. The power of sin is broken. Uh, so he said he abolished debt and brought life and mother to life through the gospel. The gospel is the means of God bringing the change. So it's without faith, without faith, we cannot please God. But when the gospel is open to me, open to you, open to us, the benefits, life and immortality, is, is revealed, re released unto us. The benefits. Galatians chapter 3. Verse 27. He said, it guides us unto death. <laughs> What is baptized? <laughs> Put on Christ is immortality, fullness. But how do you get to put on Christ? It is by being baptized unto Christ. Huh. People that are not baptized unto Christ cannot put on Christ. So all of God's dealing with you and me every time, every day, is to come to the lesson that we are baptized into Christ. What is baptized? Baptized to be immersed into Christ. To be immersed into Christ. As we are immersed into him, he said, in the likeness of his death. Uh, so when he died, we died with him. <laughs> to be baptized, to make king. To be overwhelmed. So it's a, it's like if you look at the pool of water, um, baptism of water, uh, by water, you immerse the individual. He said in in another scripture, he said in the likeness. If we explain the likeness of his death, we we'll also explain the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. Amen. So, what God is doing now is to bring us to add that exit. We are putting on Christ. Putting on Christ. That body that is in the heavens. Put on Christ. So, experiencing that death, experiencing that dying, as we experience it, we take on the character of Christ. It is the cross before the crown. It is the cross before the crown. Um, if we die with him, we shall also be resurrected with him. Um, and we have died with him, so let us experience the resurrection with him. It's something that has been done. So God, Christ abolished debt. He abolished debt. And I did it abolish debt. He came as a man. Philippians tells us that when he abolished debt, it's not just when he got to the cross. No. He said Christ came as a man and he humbled himself and went further, further, and in, even the death of the cross. So it wasn't immediately uh, one time. No. He humbled himself. That's Philippians chapter 2. Uh -huh. Until he taught not Robert to be equal with God, until he died on the cross. God was in Christ Jesus from, from Jordan. Was in Christ Jesus. Doing what? Reconciling the world unto himself. So all those process Christ went through, it was a process of recovering us from death. So it wasn't a one-time thing. 
that okay, bam, bam, it, when he died on the cross, that's when it happened. No. All right, from when he came as a man. Uh, uh, Philippians chapter 2. Verse 5. Let this mental faculty be in you, who, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, who being in the form of a God, taught it not Robbie really to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made, like, uh, made in the likeness of man, men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled, he humbled himself further himself and became obedient even unto death. Even the death of the cross. So a change started in verse 9. Wherefore God also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven of things on the earth and of things under the earth that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Okay, so we see that Christ experienced dying and death. So experience dying is, is carrying your cross daily. Daily. He came as a man. So but as we experience that in our experience, we, we, we gain access into life. He that is baptized unto Christ, immersed unto Christ, we what? Put on Christ. Amen? Amen? Amen. Okay, that's uh, admonition for today. So let's go to just, we've said a lot of things earlier. Let's go to Ezekiel and see where, how God will lead us today. Ezekiel Christ has abolished death. Death has been abolished in my life, in your life. He has been abolished. Those conditions we mentioned has been abolished. looking for Ezekiel, we want to know the characteristics of this time that we are in uh, so that we can better apply ourselves. We looked at uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 50, 61 the last time. So, oh, oh, uh, Isaiah chapter 61, verse 3. Then put your hand there, then go to Ezekiel chapter 21, verse uh, 27. Or 25, 26, 27. So it's important we know this. If I tell you now that Jesus Christ is here in his second advent, uh, most people will be scared and say, ah, Jesus Christ is here. Uh, uh, <laughs> but uh, there are some scriptures you look at and you know certainly is here in his second advent. And that's what we'll look at. Uh, uh, the second advent of Christ is not boom, sudden. It's a period of time where he carried out some certain activity. One of the activities he does is that he brings his church to perfection. He makes his church a goodly horse in the battle. Uh -huh. He has to do that. Uh, uh, so the coming of Christ is not, or uh, coming of presence of Christ is not a one-time event. 
Matthew chapter 24 tells us that. Uh, so let's just pick scriptures, then I'll, I'll pause, we we'll ask questions. In Isaiah chapter 61, verse 3, he said, uh, oh, and, uh, let's, do, let's do verse 2. Verse 2. Uh, uh, we, most of us were in here last week, so but we, uh, let's read 1, 2, 3. Let's read 1, 2, 3. So let's read together. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captive, the opening of the prison of them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of the vengeance of the Lord, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that they may be glorified. Then the, mini the ministry of the work, just after the man child is better, starts in verse 4. He said, And they, this set of people, they shall what? They shall build the old waste spaces. And brethren, that number four is us. Yes. Not, not me saying though, it's also. We have gotten that prophecy many times yes. in this church. Yes. We shall build the old west. So me and my brethren that I'm looking at now are part of the fulfillment of verse 3. Amen. The trees of righteousness. It shall build the west old, old west person. They shall rise up the former desolations and they shall repair the west cities and the desolation of many generations. Amen. Amen. So the millennial ministry starts from verse 4 and goes into 5, go to, goes into 6. He said, verse 6 says, They shall be called the ministers of God. That's 6 or 1. The ministers of God. Hmm. He said, They shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory, they shall ye boast yourself. The wealth of the Gentiles shall come into the tabernacle. Revelation chapter 21. Amen? Amen. Okay, so let's not. So, in the, we said the first coming of Christ fulfilled from verse 1 to some part of verse 2. Oh, verse 2. Verse 2. Verse 2. So, we, he, he said uh, in Luke, he said, This day, this gospel is fulfilled in your eyes. And Jesus Christ wasn't making a mistake. He stopped at what? This is the acceptable year of the Lord. So we say after that, there's the day of the vengeance of the Lord. That in the second coming, there must be vengeance. God must take charge, not by himself, but by the sons of God to execute judgment upon the earth. That's when he, 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 he not the, the Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. That's when Satan is cast down. One, the beast out of the sea is captured. The name of Jesus. The beast out of the air, the first prophet, is captured. These are God executing judgment. Behold, what desolation God has made upon the earth. <laughs> Psalm 46. 46. He said, There's a river which streams make glad the city of God. He said, Behold, what desolation the Lord. Uh, after the desolation, verse 4 of uh, Isaiah, he said, We'll repair the desolations that, 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 that was. Uh, that was as a result of God's judgment. We'll fix it. But before that, we must, there must be the shaking of the heaven and the earth. The name of Jesus. Okay. So we see that there's the vengeance of the Lord. And a part of it in verse 3 is that God blesses us. We that are mourning, say, God, come, change me, transform me. Mourn means you, are, you, are, you have the spirit of, uh, of consecration. You are groaning every day, so God, deliver me. There's this thing, there's this thing, there's this thing that deliver me. As you cry out unto he said, Give oil of joy. Verse 3. Gives oil of joy to those that mourn. He gives the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. He, he makes them trees of righteousness. So we said, God gives us the kingdom, which we define as what? 
The kingdom of God is what? Righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. uh, so that's, that's the kingdom. So we say it blesses us with those provisions when it comes a second time. Okay. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 21, verse 25, 26, 27. So here yeah, it tells us the time period. Okay. Well, one may not be able to pinpoint the exact time, the exact day, but we, in a sense we have an idea. An idea of when this judgment started. Um, the Bible tells us that it's a very long period of time. Uh, so here it said the, Israel, the nation of Israel. That's why when you want to know the timing of God, you have to know what is God, what, what is happening in the world, what is happening among the fiscal nation of Israel. And the last thing is what is happening in the church. Uh, brethren, I think the most important thing is what is happening in the church. But all those ones give us indication. Because uh, Romans chapter 11 tells us that the Israelite, fiscal nation of Israel, is very important in the economy of God. Amen? Amen. Am I talking Greek? No. Who, is, who, is, who knows that the, the Israel, fiscal Israel is important in God's calendar? Anybody? It's written. Okay, it's written. Man, you, you have read it. It's Romans chapter 11, verse 11, to the end. They are very important. Uh, the calling and the election of God has not been revoked. He said God does not put an end to his calling and election. And the Israelites are a part of his calling and the election. They are a kingdom of priests. Uh, a kingdom of priests, a kingdom of uh, uh, a royal priesthood in, in the time of the institution of the old covenant. He told them, told, his, uh, told uh, Moses, he said, you are a kingdom of priests, a kingdom of, of royal priesthood. So it's, it's something engraved, it's there. But it is not being fulfilled now. And instead of them doing that, they said, no, Moses, you just go to God. So there, there was now a separation of Moses' class and uh, Aaron's class and the nation of Israel. But it is all of Israel that are a body of priests. Amen? Amen? Okay, so we see that God's people was the instrument. Upon the earth, they were supposed to be instrument of God. But they sinned. They brought in idols, they defile the, 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 the land, um, the tabernacle was defied, so he now called them a wicked prince of Israel. Thy days come, thy iniquity shall have an end. This wickedness that I see daily in this promised land, it must end. Verse 16, 26, thus said the Lord, remove the diadem, take off the crown. We see the, the two... Uh, the southern kingdom, the northern kingdom, uh, um, Judah and others, they, they were overthrown. And that, who, that which is lowly, we say the lowly are the Gentiles. And I base him that is high. I will overturn, overturn, overturn it. So there were three levels of the Egyptian, uh, no, not Egyptian, the Babylon raiding the nation of Israel. They overturned, overturned, overturned it. And it shall be no more. That means their kingship, their diadem, the, ro the royalty will be no more until he come whose right it is. And I will give it him. So Israelite was overthrown. They, they didn't have any rule. And uh, in 1948, they came back to the land. Uh, but that fiscal nation of <laughs> uh, Luke, let's go to Luke. Luke now gives us the clarity. It's not just the nation of Israel, it's now Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Luke chapter 21, verse 24. 
until it comes white it is and I will give it him. So we said until it comes white it is is, is Christ's head and body. Christ's head and body. It comes to, to take charge. So the, the, the rulership and the government that has been under Babylon, under Medes, Persian, under the Greeks, under Roman, on, under the Roman Catholic Church, over all various institutions, all to the time of the end, when it's fully manifested, Revelation chapter 13, he said God will overthrow it so that uh, God takes the right of the kingdom. He, he now be the ruler and the, the, the one to reign over the earth. So in a look, it gives us very specific. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. They shall fall by the edge of the sword. And be led away captive unto all nations. So as at when Christ was talking, they were already thinking that, ah, God restored the kingdom. We don't see. Jesus Christ was not telling them in this scripture that the thing never ends. It has not ended. Okay. Uh, Luke chapter 21, verse 5, 6, and 7. Remember, Luke is talking from the perspective of what? Man. But that Luke is the one that says the son of man. Son of man. He wasn't a Jew. So his perspective was different. If you go to uh, uh, brother Matthew, Matthew is a scholar. The way he was writing, and everything he's thinking about is about kingdom, 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 kingdom. So you see their discourse is different. So Luke was now saying here, he said, and some speak, uh, right here, yeah. and some speak, of the temple, how it was adorned with goodly stones and gift. He said, And for these things which ye behold, the days will come in the which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. So he's talking about that temple, that literal temple that they were seeing, goodly stones and gifts. Verse 7, and they asked him, saying, Master, in Matthew, he said they asked him privately. In here, they asked him just two questions. In Matthew, they asked him three questions. And they asked him, saying, Master, when shall these things be? What? What's, that? What's the question? When will these stones, this temple be thrown down? When shall these things be? And what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? Amen? Amen. So he now listed all. So let's go back to 24. He said, They shall fall by the edge of the sword, and they will overthrow. The temple was destroyed. AD 1970. The abomination of desolation was in the holy place, General Titus. Uh, so he said, let those that are in Judea flee to the mountains. So when you read Matthew, you know that it is a fiscal fulfillment which they experience, which you can read in history book, and it's also a spiritual fulfillment. Now we know it is not just at the time of Jesus Christ, but it also refers to the time of the end, which we'll see. Because they are on that question that uh, Matthew said is the end of the of the of the world, and it, it, the sign of thy coming. So he wasn't talking about the first coming because Christ was there with them, but he was talking about the second coming, the sign of thy coming. Uh, we'll pause, then we'll go back to Matthew. But let's look here. Then he said they shall fall by the edge of the sword. That means they will be destroyed. A million Jews was killed around AD 70. They defied the tabernacle. Of course, the tabernacle was already gone now. The veil has rented. I don't know. They were still doing their feast. 
Oh man, they were still doing their feet. The veil has rented as at when Christ died and resurrected. So, but they continued. It, it took uh, 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 an unbeliever, that's General Titus, to, to desecrate the place. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and led away captive into all nations, including Germany, including Nigeria, including everywhere. You see Jews everywhere. They were led away captive. They were they fall by the edge of the sword and led away captive. We are into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. How is this physically how is this fulfilled right now? It was when in the six day war that they took away Jerusalem. That gives you an indication. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. So Jerusalem will be under the rule of the unbelievers. When he said until, so the times of the Gentiles is the time from the overthrow till the time Jerusalem was recovered. Until the time, so the times of the Gentiles, how do you define the times of the Gentiles? The time of the Gentiles is the time God has given to the Gentiles to rule upon the earth. And the time of Gentiles include the Babylon, Medes Persian, all those kingdoms, those beasts, until, even till now. But it gives you an indication when these things are, 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 are about to end. Said Jerusalem, until, so right now as I'm speaking, the times of the Gentiles has been fulfilled. Because I see the literal Jerusalem has been free from the rule. Who rules over Jerusalem now? It's the Jews. So it gives us clear indication until the times of the Gentiles. There is a phrase that uh, we need to know. It's to know that Christ don't come. Uh -huh. But we have to know what manner of his coming. Uh -huh. The second advent has started. Uh, uh, but what, what are the things that I, I can see right now to show that it has started? Uh -huh, that's, that's it. But uh, uh, Revel uh, Acts, chapter, Acts chapter 15. Yeah. I know uh, uh, my brother there was trying to answer the questions. She's a, uh, the guy is a prophet. Like everybody. <laughs> yes, yeah, so uh, uh, before you answer, uh, ask your question. I want to, let's go to Acts chapter 15. After they have heard their peace. Acts chapter 15, verse 13. There's some key words. There's the times of the Gentile. There's the fullness of the Gentile. There's the times of the Gentile. There's the fullness of the Gentiles. Uh, I think it's, um, it's in Romans chapter 11. Uh, you can write that down, maybe today or some other day. And if somebody can find it for me, it's uh, Romans chapter 11. It talks about the fullness. Okay, verse 25. The fullness of the Gentiles. So there's the times. This, all these, script, these scriptures open up times. Times of the Gentiles. How do they spell Gentiles again? G E S. Okay. There's the times of the Gentiles and the fullness. Fullness of the Gentiles. They all talk about different things. This one is talking about the unbeliever. 
entering into the fullness of life. Then this one talk about timing. But this one talk about the rulership, where God has given the Gentiles time to rule. Sorry, can you say it again? I'll say it again, by scriptures. We, we already know the times of the Gentiles. Yes? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, okay. Uh, the times of, of the Gentiles. Yeah, we know. Well, we, let me go back. Uh, uh, Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21 verse 24. Until the times of the Gentiles. Until the times of the Gentiles. That means it's the time period God has given the Gentiles, people that are not Jews, to rule over the earth. Babylon, Medes Persian, the Greeks, um, the Roman, the Roman Catholic Church, everything until we get to Revelation chapter 13. The beast out of what? The sea. All the full manifestation. Those are the times of the Gentiles. That means uh, politics will keep on going on. Uh -huh. All those things, will be, because they are, all we are waiting for is a stone cutter with our hands to smote that image. That image is still standing. So those are the times of the Gentiles. Times. Until, until the shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. Until, so, until the, time, the times of the Gentiles, it don't, it don't expire. It don't expire. Because we know Jerusalem had been freed. So when you are seeing everything now, you say, oh, the time of the end has come. The kingdom will soon change from the kingdom of the, uh, of the world to the kingdom of, of the sun. Amen. Amen? Amen? So by now, uh, the, uh, the, the times of the Gentiles or the, the world system, they are living on both time. When they are saying politics, politics, but you just say, this thing has ended. We see Jerusalem is being freed. We know now the stone shall be cut out with our hand to destroy the image. Remember? The day of vengeance. Uh huh. No, king, no government, no matter how fine it is, no matter the political uh, manifesto, it will represent the beast. We know that. There's no way. It, it, it comes from that same root. Uh -huh. Me, myself, and I. So it will represent the beast. So, but we know now that the times of the Gentile have been fulfilled. Just a timeline. Just, we know because Jerusalem has been free. No matter how politics they do, that Jerusalem can never go to anybody. No matter the accord, no matter the words that the, the typical the Jews, they all told that they will sack the government, bring another government. They will be <laughs> Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until, until the times of the Gentiles is fulfilled. Then my little one was asking me, he said, and there shall be signs in the heavens. When this one, that one has happened, there's now signs in the heavens. And there shall be signs in the heavens. So right now, there's signs in the heavens. Uh, but that's left for another, another day. Men's heart failing them. Okay, so the fullness of the Gentile, Romans chapter 11. Okay. There's a, a, a phrase we said, we said, the Israelites are still very important, okay? Very, very important in the calendar of God. But now, God is not focusing on the Israelites. He's focusing on who? On you and me, the church. Let's put our still hands on Romans. Let's go to Acts chapter 15. So, everybody, if, if, if you don't understand this verse, we are not going anywhere. We just stay here. Uh -huh. But we are not building a tabernacle here. But we just stay until we get it. So, in uh, Acts chapter 15, verse 13, 14, and 15, and 16, and 17, it talks about a time period. And we can divide it into three, blo three blocks. Or you may add four. Three blocks. So they had a meeting in Jerusalem. Then when everybody kept quiet, Brother James spoke. Verse 13. And after they had heard their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. 
Simon had declared how God at first did visit the Gentiles to take out a people for his name. Amen? Amen. 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 So we can divide. Uh, okay, let me just one. One, God's dealing with the Israelites. Israelites. Uh, Moses and the Israelites. It's okay. So, all of God's dealing was with the Israelites. So, now here, God, that verse says, God went to visit the Gentiles. God visit me, right? Yes. He visit you. Who is the Gentiles? We are there, okay. He uh, visit, visit. The Gentiles. And the aim, aim of the visiting the Gentiles was to do what? To get a body of people. Yes. A people for his name. Yes. Name, what's name? Character. Character. Nature. Nature. Okay, that's number two. Number two. Yeah. I'll, instead of three, I'll make it two. It, it went to the Gentiles to take out a people for his name. Yeah. Did he go and visit all the Gentiles to take everybody out? Amen? Yeah. Is it everybody? No. Yeah. People. Uh, I, I didn't forget your question. No. I'm coming. A people. A group of people. Not everybody. Yes. Okay. Okay, that's number two. Number, uh, oh, wait, go to the next one. Number two. To, vis, to take out a people for his name. His name. Number three. Okay. Then he said, and disagree the words of the prophet as it is written. Yeah. After this, mm. mark the word. After this, when he return after, after this, after this, yes, yes. when he return, what will he do? He will build again the tabernacle of David, which is falling down. Who is the tabernacle of David? Jesus. The tabernacle of David. Jesus. It's the nation, Jews. The Jews, okay. They are the Jews. It can't be. It can't be Jesus. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. And it can't be you and me. It can't be the church. Yes. It can't be the church okay. because the church is already transformed in verse 2. After this, what is this? Verse 15. After, after the visitation. No, no, uh, um, 14. After he has done this. After this. So, verse uh, 16 now. The tabernacle of David. The tabernacle of David is what the Israelite. What will he do? He will build because he's falling down. Brethren, you are one of the builders. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All those guys that wear long gown and, and think, huh. by the time the, the floodgates is open, it will be easy for them to know Jesus. Ah, they say, this is the Messiah. It is falling down. He will build the ruins thereof. That's Israelite. Israelite. Physical Israelite. As a, a whole body of people. Okay, after this, shall, okay. Then, he said, after this, that was a key word. After this, verse 17. After that one has happened, he said, that, that, that. Or when 16 and 17 together. That, the residue of men. The rest Gentiles. The other people that are not born again and saved. After this, I will return and build the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down, and I will build again the rules thereof, and I will set it up. Because they are needed to, they will fulfill work in the millennium. As what? As a kingdom of priests. That are falling down, and I will set it up. He said, that. That, the residue of man. So this is the residue of man, number four. Residue. That the remaining people that are not here, that don't residue. Don't, don't, don't think Satan will carry everybody. Ah, Satan, that has lost the battle. <laughs> residue of what? Men. Of men. And he now qualified the men. The rest Gentiles. Rest. And the rest of men, my what? Seek after the Lord. And all the Gentiles whom my name is called, said the Lord that dwelt all these things. So these are very important. So, uh, Uncle, would you just 
would you say that when he says uh, that the residue of men might see after the Lord and all the Gentiles, is that Joel 2.28 where it says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, is that Okay, yes, in, jo in, in, jo in Joel, it refers to what? The, the, the church. But, uh, yes, but if, 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 why do we know it refers to the church? Because it was quoted at the time of Pentecost. Okay. Amen? Amen. Uh -huh. So the all there is the, is the church class. Uh -huh. uh, because if you compare scripture with scripture, we know it is a fulfillment of that that, that scripture. And if you would see the things that those people did, the ones that got the same in Joel chapter 2 that you refer to Paris, you see that the things they did is not something that is applicable to people in the world to win it for. You know that it's a people that have the hand of God upon their lives that are able to accomplish all that desolation and recovery as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I know I have two questions to deal with. I have not done that. So we'll go to um, Romans chapter 11 to talk about the fullness of the Gentiles. But before that, let me pause. Uh, Andrea, you had a question? Oh, Anita, okay. Yes. Luke? Luke 21, verse 6. So which aspect? Uh, Luke 21. Luke 21, right? Yeah. Oh, they showed him, they were showing him, okay, let's, this is the story, this is the story. Uh, 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 the other scripture tells us that he was on Mount Ol 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 Olives, Ol Olivet, Olive. it was a mountain, he was sitting down. Probably it was just, they were staring at uh, Jerusalem and all that. Uh, that's what Matthew tells us. Okay. And as some spake of the temple, I, it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts, verse, verse 5. Uh, he said, so verse 6 is a connection to what they were seeing. Did you get that? So anything they said in verse 6 is connected to what they were seeing in verse 5. So let's look at verse 5. Verse 5 says, And as some speak of the temple, how it is adorned with goodly stones and gift, he said, as for these things, this temple, this temple, with stones, they are, they are, so imagine they caught fine, beautiful stone. They made it part of the, the structure of the temple. And for these things which ye behold, the days will come in the which there shall not be left one stone upon another. And I mean, this temple, will be, and it, it, the guy did it. If you go to the nation of Israel now, the only thing you see standing there is that wall, the wailing wall. The rest of people were destroyed. The temple was destroyed. Ah, if it's now, you get any temple anywhere that is precious stone. Ah, in the night, they're going to break in and take the precious stone. <laughs> in that, <laughs> right now, you see some gang, they will break, oh, drive the car, boom, hit the, grab one stone. I said that, that stone, I want precious stone. I'm grabbing, I'm from a, a company where they, they, they design precious stones in form of earrings and all that. <laughs> so the, that place was decimated. Their Titus took all the precious things in the temple. They carried to the temple of their God. And so it, it's specifically talking about that temple. Don't spiritualize it. It's not talking about any temple. It's that temple. <laughs> uh -huh, because it's specified. And these things which you behold, the days will come. Verse 6. Verse 6 in which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Does that make sense? Yeah. It makes sense, okay, it makes sense. But he was not telling them all the things that will, aspire, that will happen leading to that. Um, Romans chapter 11. Uh, Romans chapter 11, Excuse yes. Me, we go to Romans, Verse eight, yeah. Yes. This oh, that act, that act I read. Ah, that act in a serious scripture. Hmm. Um, <laughs> okay, so, so what, what, no, what aspect? Yes, that's what I'm trying to 
Um, I, I think when we are reading down from verse 18, mm. it says that after they have heard their speech, Jesus answered. After 15, yes. And later, Simeon had declared, okay, Jesus was picked up and turned them how Simeon declared. That's right. Uh, and 15, it says, and these, these agree with the words of the prophet. That means if. That means if you go to the words of the prophet, prophet you will see everything that God will bless the Gentiles. In verse 16, when it was when James was speaking, he was speaking in the first person. He said, After this, I will return. That means he's quoting verbatim what the prophet said. Yes, he's talking about the I there now. He's talking about the person of Christ's head and body. That I. Okay, or when I uh, go to verse, 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 verse 14. Okay, let me just complete the question so that okay, you yes. perspective. It says, after this, I will return. Yes, that is the God that visited the Gentiles. Yeah, I believe he's talking about the God. The God, God that God he visited the Gentiles. Now, okay. the tabernacle they were referring mm. to there, mm. I, I feel it's the physical tabernacle that was holding down. Okay. That okay. Jerusalem was overthrown. Okay. Okay. Now, when we go down and we start talking about the rebuilding of yeah. the same tabernacle, tabernacle. Mm. I feel they're making reference to the same physical tabernacle. Okay. That's where I'm getting yeah. Yeah, that's okay. If yeah. you agree with the physical tabernacle, I agree with you. If you say it's not the physical tabernacle, <laughs> I agree with you. Because there's some me mesan mesanic, mes mesanic. mesanic Jews that says it will be a physical temple. People will have to come to that physical temple. And today, there are some people keeping a lot of uh, treasures aside that when, Christ, when the Messiah comes, they will build the physical tabernacle. They're still looking into the sky. Yeah, they are still looking at that. So in a sense, some people, for them to be Gentiles, that's the other verse, residue city of men. Some people, for them to believe in God, they would have to look for a physical tabernacle. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But let's come close and see what is a tabernacle. Well, sorry, if, if we, that scripture yeah. is quoted in Amos. Amos, yeah. So if we read that scripture in Amos, it's I talk about it the constitution of people. Mm. Then it cannot be the physical. Yes, uh, no, I want to. Yeah, I wanted to yeah, go further to say that. Like now, are we a tabernacle? Yes. Sure. Okay, so it means that at that time when God will be ministering to them, it may not be a physical tabernacle. They can gather under the, under the tree. They can, so it can be anywhere, but uh, they will be being taught. Actually, why it's confusing? Yes. Because in, in, in this particular scripture, yes. They were making referencing to the time. You remember when you started? Yes. We were talking about. They were asking, time. "How do we know about this the time?" time? Yes. So my like the way. No, no, it's okay. It is, yeah. At the end of time, once that tabernacle is rebuilt, yes. it's an indication. Yes. Of the time of the end, which whoever was teaching them was talking about. That's where. Even though one of the reasons why that, that would not be the case, yeah. you know, is that in Hebrews, Paul, not the writer of Hebrews, but Paul, yeah. labored to state that the physical tabernacle is no longer relevant. Yeah, hallelujah, at hallelujah. all to God's purposes. Mm. It's only is now a new tabernacle, a new covenant. So, if that's the case, then God will not use the physical tabernacle because God is not invested at all in the physical tabernacle at all anymore. Okay. So, when we say. <laughs> <laughs> so, Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20, this thing. Chapter 21 say, Behold, a can oh, wait, verse 1. A kind of power of God is with men. Uh, he would, he'd be with men. He said the tabernacle was in the heavens. Then he came down. Uh huh. Yeah, Revelation, oh, well, Revelation 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. And for the first heaven and the first earth was passed away, and there was no more sea. In fact, that scripture is at the end of the millennium. Uh, but it's the end of the millennium. That's the final appearing. But in the beginning of the millennium, there's a new heaven, but there was an old earth. The old earth has to be reconstructed. In the beginning of the millennium, there's a new heaven, but there's still sea. Yeah. Uh -huh. Sea talk about restless humanity because the beast came out of the sea. So, but in the process of time, verse 1 is fulfilled at the end of the millennium. He said, I saw the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven. Prepared. So it came down. So that temple there is the church. 
coming to the earth. And he said the people flowed into it. Mat uh, Razai chapter 4 tells us that. He said, let us go into the, the house of the Lord. If you are the house of the Lord, then the other Gentiles are coming into the house of the Lord. That scripture is not talking about you and me going to the house of the Lord. Because we are the house of the Lord. Jesus. That is so precious. Isaiah chapter 4. Amen. Yes, yes. Uh, before that, Isaiah chapter 4. Sometimes I make some statement. Uh, I want to clarify issues. You answer your question. Um, Isaiah chapter 2, verse 1. When you start reading the scripture, you will not be separating the physical nation of Israel and from yourself. <laughs> the scripture will become more brighter. The word of uh, Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Verse 2. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on top of the mountains and exact above the hills, and all the nations will flow what? Flow into it. They will flow into the tabernacle. Okay. Uh, verse uh, 3. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, let us go to the mount of the... Remember, the mount of the Lord's house is you and me, the church. The stone cut out without hands yeah. and smote that image. And that uh, stone became an exceeding great mountain. Amen. Amen. Come ye, and let us go to the mount of the Lord. What? To what? To the house of the God of Jacob. And, to, and he will teach us his ways, and he will walk in his path. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word from Jerusalem. Amen. The people now are now coming what? To the Jacob class. They are going to the Jacob class. It's not Israel. They go to the Jacob class. So here in this scripture, there are three levels. The church, the fiscal nation of Israel, and the world. The world is now saying, let's go to the, the Lord's house to be taught. Here, it's not talking about you. I, don't, I know we have sang it, we have jumped, hey, hey, I'm going to the Lord's house. No, it's not you. You are the Lord's house. Who is the Lord's house? We are the house of the Lord. We are the temple of God. Amen? Amen. So in this scripture, when it's in the last days, key words, verse 2, and she come to pass in the last days, in the last days, the church is already standing perfect, without spot, without wrinkle. Amen? Amen? So in this scripture, it tells you that people will come to, because, uh, 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 Joe, John Joe, eh? Don't Joe cannot see the church. Oh, yeah. Because this church is spirit. Yeah. It's not spiritual, it's spirit. It's with the bride. Don Joe, Joe, the common man. Like by Jack. They, can, they cannot see the, the common man or the person. Jack and Joe. Joe, they cannot see the church. But they will see some people. And the people they can see and touch is the nation of Israel. They can touch them. And for Christians that doesn't make that class will be part of the nation of Israel. They can see. They can touch. Remember the seed of Abraham? As the stars of the heavens. They can't see them. But the sand upon the seashore. The sand upon the seashore, they can see them. They can handle them. <laughs> they can touch them. And those people will lead them to Christ. Because the seed of Abraham are in two classes. They are the two classes that will what? Bless the nations. So they can't see the church. But the church will be performing. Be ruling. Be ruling. Reigning. So, but they can see some people. The class they can see is what? The tabernacle of David that is falling down. They are the people they can see, they can touch. They can say, ah, but the guy will be under the tree and be teaching them, teaching them, teaching them. Why the people in the heavens will be assisting the people they can see physically. That's why to bless humanity, God visits the Gentiles to take out the people for his name. Then there must be another class that must be physically upon the earth. He built the tabernacle of the... So it's the house of Jacob. It's not called, Jacob is the man that is man. Israel is the one... Yes. It's the spirit. It's the spirit. So they say, oh, let us go to the house of God. There are some people that will not go. Uh, Matthew tells us that. They are the goats. Stubborn people. 
He said, separate the sheep from the goat. There's the goat. The sheep and the goat there is not talking about you. Okay? For well, another time we'll look at it. It's not talking about it. It's talking about the nations there. There'll be separation of sheep from goat. So we see that the tabernacle of David uh, that is falling down, there must be a repair, there must be a restoration. All those words are key words. But at the end of the day, they say the residue of man will now what? seek the Lord. Mm. They will be seeking the Lord. Yes. Not talking about talking about the rest Gentiles. And all that they will now seek the Lord. But God will have paid great attention to the nation of Israel uh, as a, a body, a nation. Uh, uh, I don't want to lose track. Let us go to the and judge among. Okay, verse 4. Let's read this thing. Verse 4. And he shall judge among the nations. That's a, a millennial work. And shall rebook many people. They shall, they shall beat their swords. That means no war, no warfare. 1,000 years reign of Christ. Shall beat their swords into plunge. That means they were agriculture. First, now they are body, but they are Greek. Deal with the condition of their heart. No fighting again. And their spears into pumi hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation. How does nuclear weapon? It will be dissolved. That's, they say, they, this nuclear weapon will be turned into powder. Pew. They are struggling of how to, how to, how to denuclearize it and, and make sure it's not harmful. Now, now the word of God, just send God's word, the thing will be dissolved. Neither shall they learn war anymore. Okay, uh, that act we must read, uh, no, not by Romans chapter 11, very important. Uh, but before that, my sister, what's your question or your contribution? Okay. Yes. Yes. There, yeah. There's a scripture I can say. It's not sudden. Yes. Okay. I will. I will. Certainly, I will. Uh, I have uh, uh, Matthew chapter 25 will give us an idea. Uh, well, I mentioned it before, but just now it down. So uh, Romans chapter 11, verse 11. Okay, uh, to, to throw more light on what we've been saying, let's read from verse 11. So we read it together. Amen? Amen. Okay, the person now not reading, we have to stand up. Among the youth. <laughs> okay, just to make sure everybody's awake. So let's read from 11. I said then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather, should their fall, salvation is come to the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. For if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminution of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. But I speak to you Gentiles, in so as much as I am an apostle of the Gentiles, and magnify my office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation of flesh, I might save some of them. If the casting away of them be the consoling of the world, what shall be the receiving of them be from life from the dead? Hallelujah. And if the fat food be holy, the lump is also holy. If the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches are broken off, and now, an olive tree, tree we are grafted am, among them, and with them partakers of the root of the fatness of the olive tree. <laughs> not your servant, but be thou boast, that yes, not the root, but the root thee. Thou would say then, the branches were broken off, that I may be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief, they are broken off and they are standard by faith. Be not high minded, but fear. And if God spare not the world of branches and take heed, leave the spirit of the But behold, oh, the goodness and the severity of God on them which is fell. Severity and towards the goodness. If they can continue in the goodness, well, they will be cut off. And then they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in 
For God is able to grab them in again. And if thou were cut off out of the olive tree, which was wide by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which are in our natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? I will not, brethren, that they should be ignorant of this mystery. Please see if you will rise in your own eyes. That the blindness is a part happening to Israel until Let's read that again. That's the scripture. The Israelites they are blind now, but because of until. So until the fullness of the Gentiles is God's people among the nations coming to their own, coming to own. There's the fullness of the. It, it tells you that the number is a fixed number. No, don't think uh, it's bam. No, it's a fixed number. That's why the foolish virgins, the, uh, the foolish virgins didn't make it. It's a fixed number. He said, until the fullness of their coming. When they come in, then God will now minister towards. It's a fixed number. Ah, a number now. The door was shut. The door, the door was shut. The door was yes, so. Yes. yes. The body of Christ is a fixed number. Not uh, bam, bam. That's why you need to press in, seek him. <laughs> It's not God, it's not, it's not, God knows the number. I don't know the number. There's a fixed number. Some people say it's 144,000. No, doesn't. If it's 144,000, why did he say 10,000 come, uh, uh, Jesus Christ come with 10,000 of his sins? No, it's not. so it's not 144,000, it's not 10,000. But it's a fixed number. <laughs> it's a fixed number. The door was shut. So, well, you went to buy. So, when you talk, sorry, when you talk of a fixed number, that means if as it, many as will come in at that set time. That's right. That's right. Okay. But once the number complete before God, okay. He locked the door. So the number of people that will make up the bride of Christ is fixed. Or they, it can't be un uncountable. And blah, 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 blah. Uh -huh. if it's ten in God's mind, it's ten. Okay. Of course, it's not ten, though. Uh -huh. <laughs> because the disciples were twelve now. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. the, the, there's 10,000. So, if it's that number, it's called, say, until the fullness of the So, the fullness of the Gentiles, as I was saying, is, the, is different from the times of the Gentiles. The times of the Gentiles is the time God has given a lease to the world to rule themselves. The fullness of the Gentiles is the completion of the, the number of the body of Christ. Okay, he said, the blindness in part until the fullness of the Gentiles are coming. Let's read for that, verse 26. <laughs> yes, yeah. Okay, if you read, the, the times of the Gentiles is when they said, Jerusalem shall be trodden down of what? The Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Luke chapter 21. Verse 25. Uh, 25. Until. So that tells you a timing, God, a times of the Gentiles. So if you ask me now, who is ruling upon the earth? Times of the Gentiles. But I say the times of the earth don't end. Oh, don't end. It's there at the end because the sons of God is arising to bring judgment uh -huh, against this institution. Amen? Amen? He said the beast out of the sea was taken. So, so the time that the times of the Gentiles. So when we say the times of the Gentiles, is the time God has given to the Gentiles, the unbelievers to rule upon the earth. And we have examples, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, the Romans, the Medo Persian, the, the Greeks, Napoleon, uh, uh, the, the, the government of the day, different political nations and all that. They are ruling now, really. but their lease, I'll call it a lease, is, is ended. Uh, the, the God is rising God's, the sons to, 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 to take over the kingdom. Actually, sorry, actually, when you put this in perspective, you will see that in a very short period before now, um, there was a false establishment of a rule over a people in the Middle East. It's just that you must be a student of history to understand this. There were a group of people in trying to fulfill scripture by force, by their own strength. They decided to have a caliphate. And that caliphate, overnight, they overran Iraq. And in some few months, they took part of 
Syria, if you go and see the SWAT value of where they took, it's not a small thing. What do they want to do? They wanted to establish a government, an Islamic government, over that entire region and by extension to the other parts of the world. But it wasn't God's time. It wasn't God's plan. And the whole world rose up against it. Did, did you notice that when they started calling for young people, people from Canada, young boys from Canada, they decided they left everything and went to Raqqa. People left Britain, they went to Raqqa. People left Nigeria, they went from Ivory Coast, all over the world. It's as if this sea of humanity was going to, you know, was going to take over the whole world. And they were bent on pushing it, on pushing it, on pushing it. But the time of God is not God's plan, and it's not the time of God. And as I'm talking with you right now, there is no such caliphate. Am I speaking Greek? Yeah. What? Maybe you just call it what That's why you need speak actually. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. There is no there is no such caliphate anymore. Because if you go back to history that we've been some of the things that we are reading now in God's plan. God is very deliberate about it. And God is not ready to shift his gaze from his purpose. But we find in some instances when man tries to fulfill God's purpose by his own strength and God stood against it. That was not the first time. And I can tell you when he says that there will be, you know, people that will come and say, I am Christ. We have not seen anything. They will surely come. Some people like Tom Jones that my brother mentioned. Actually, Tom Jones happens to be a preacher in the U.S. And he too declared himself to be Christ. And when the American system could not take care of him, he went to Guyana. And from Guyana, people came from all over the world and said, you are Christ. You are Christ. And he declared a particular and said, on this day, we are all going to heaven. So Jones. somebody, Jim, eh, what do you call him? Jim Jones. Jim Jones. Thank you, man. You know, sorry, I said Tom Jim Jones. All of them. You know. So, so, so these are people, people who wants to fulfill Scripture by their own strength, but they are not of God. And we still have some of them, pockets in some places. They will have a little measure of insight into the purpose of God, like what we are dealing with here now. God is giving us insight into his time and his period. And I dare say that we should take advantage of this period that we have. Because it's not everybody that would have the opportunity of being in this level of um, insight into God's purposes. So please be um, watchful. Be watchful and prayerful that this day will not catch you on our ears. And somebody asked for uh, rapture. I will leave that for the login. <laughs> okay, so we, we have not finished this. This, uh, we know. Let's continue. Uh, no, uh, Romans, Romans chapter 11, verse 25. He was clarifying the, the fullness of the Yes, I think they got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> got it. <laughs> so but let's go to verse 25. So let's read 25. Because there's uh, it, uh, 25 and 26 is very critical. In, and uh, uh, 27 is, is very... Okay, and let's read again. I will not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery. Least you be wise in your own conceit. That blindness in part is happened to Israelite until the fullness of the Gentiles is coming. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion a deliverer. And it shall turn on godliness from Jacob. Amen. He said, and so all Israel. When will all Israel be saved? When the fullness of the Gentiles come in. Verse, we'll put 25 and 26 together. It agrees with the uh, Acts that we're reading. He said, until the fullness of the Gentiles are coming. And so, after this has happened, after the church is standing, when you enter the fullness and the, uh, the, 
Amen. 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 I don't say amen. I said, when you enter the fullness. Amen. Oh, thank God. Yes, when we all enter the fullness and the church is complete, our attention is not to the Gentiles. Our attention is to the Jews. So, so all Israel as a church, as a body, shall be saved as it is written. Remember the scripture? Where did we read it to? Jacob, Jacob, Jacob. Who is, who is coming out of Zion? The church. We are the deliverer. And we, just, and we go to Jacob. Jacob, Jacob, Jacob. The first condition of Israel. And turn ungodliness out. Turn ungodliness out. And they shall come. As it is written. It's a prophetic word. As it is written. It, they, they shall come out of Zion, the deliverer. Oh, Christ's head and body, yeah. deliverer. <laughs> and, watch, and shall turn ungodliness away from Jacob, the Israel class. The Israel class. Amen? 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 Amen. 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 Then he now went, went forward and said, For this is my covenant unto them. Who are the them? Is it you? It's not you. So when you are reading the Old Testament, that, that you take, there's some scripture you take yourself out. Say, no, that's not me. This is talking about others. When I'm entered my own, I'll fulfill this among the nations. The seed of Abraham shall be a blessing to humanity. This covenant unto them I will, uh, that I, will, I shall take away their sins. And all that. You go on, you, you, then when you read here, you quickly go to the Old Testament. Say, ah, what is God saying? You look at the context and you know that this, this is God, what God is saying concerning them. Verse 28, I'll try not to make any comment. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. For your sake. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. 29. For the, for the gifts and the calling of God is without repentance. Uh, as in, the, in time past have not believed God, yet uh, now obtain mercy through their unbelief. Even so have these also now not believed that through your mercy they will obtain mercy. They without us cannot be made perfect. And it was referring to the overcomers of the Old Testament. They without us cannot be made perfect. We, by our ministry, they are come to that estate of perfection. Amen. Hmm. Amen. That he might have mercy upon all. Amen. He concludes, no, no, the previous verse, 20, 30, 30, 31, 31, 31. And even so, these were not believe that through your mercy, through your ministry, your ministry, the ministry of the church, they will obtain mercy to recover them from ungodliness. Okay, 30, 30, I, I promised myself I won't make comment. 32, 32. And God has concluded them all in unbelief. Wait, let's be together, please, please. God has concluded them all in unbelief. That he may have mercy upon all. All the depth of the riches of the wisdom of the knowledge of God. How unsearchable is judgment. And his ways were as far and in our Amen, amen, amen. So he went on further and further. Amen? Amen. God has really helped us. Hallelujah. I'm amazed myself. Hallelujah. Amen? amen? Matthew chapter 25. Matthew 24, 24. Oh, where's my sister? Okay. Come. Amen. 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 So in Matthew chapter 24, there are three questions. Verse 1 says, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the building of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. 
as he sat upon the Mount Olives. So this one gives us more explanation. Remember, Brother Luke, who was not in the core disciples, he was there. It was not the core, but this guy gave, Matthew gave us one, he said, as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, of course, Mount Olives overlooked the city. The disciples came to him privately. Verse 20, chapter 24 and 25. You can't understand it except you go to Christ privately. Uh -huh. Christ has to teach us these things himself. They went to him privately saying, tell us, when shall these things be? Number one question. And what is the sign of thy coming? Number two. Number two, and of the end of the war. Amen? Amen? So when you read that, all, Jesus Christ is a good, uh, he answers questions right. Okay? So any of these three questions, you will see the answers in chapter 24 and 25. And it's, it's all there. It's, it's, it's clearly there. He said, when shall these things be? And when is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So Matthew chapter 25. Yes, Matthew chapter 24, verse 1. Uh, so we're looking at Matthew chapter 24, verse 1. And I'm coming, your question will be answered. Uh, so we said uh, uh, that uh, the, the, the Jesus Christ saw the tabernacle in verse 1. Oh, when, verse 1. Verse 1. Then he now told them that these things... These stones that we see must be, be thrown down. Okay? So they now ask him questions in verse 3. He said, what will these things be? When will these stones be thrown down? These stones. Mm -hmm. Then they now ask him another question. What is the sign of thy presence? The word coming there is presence. When do I know that Jesus is here? The sign of thy presence. The word there is parousia. It means presence. Uh, let me ask a question. Is there any difference between coming and presence? Coming. Okay, coming. Speaking of English, yes. Yes. like yes. pure English, yes. there is a difference. Yes. So it's a difference. That, um, no, go check. Go check. The word, the word, the yeah. word uh, this thing coming, it says Stephanos is coming. Okay. Uh, he said, I'm very happy that Stephanus is coming. So, so, Stephanus was already the same word. You, it was presence with him. Okay. So, I'm very glad. That, uh, so presence is different. Present means he, he has come, oh, but he's now there. He's not still coming, coming, coming. He's there. He, he came. So the Hebrew uh, Greek word there, it, it has the meaning of come, but the, 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 the final interpretation is presence. Jesus Christ is coming a second time. So when he comes, it's not, it's not coming, coming, but it's not there. It stays presence. So when you check the word presence there, or coming there, it's not a one-time event. When he comes, he stays to do something. With that Greek or this thing, he comes to remove the spot and the wrinkle. It's a, a major work he's doing. So we ask uh, the Bible, we say, See rain in the time of the latter rain. In the time of the latter rain, the final rain that brings for the harvest, there's someone standing in the midst of us doing the change. Amen. So it's a, a, a when we, I will look at three verses that talks about presence. The, the presence, yes. So if we open it up further, yes. Our understanding mm. of New Testament time, mm. which is the time we live in, is mm. the fact that after Christ left, he said, I go to the Father, and I will send you the Comforter. That's right. So in essence, Christ is always still with us, yes. but in the person of the Holy Ghost, yes. enabling and perfecting and doing all he does with us to bring us to the place of perfection. Yes. But when we are referring to the second coming, coming, we are talking about when Christ will come back, probably maybe in heavenly bodily form to redeem the saved. I think that's where the question is. No, no that's where the question is. That's where I am. Uh, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> you you did mention last week yes. that Christ is going to, like the second coming is going to be whether like twice or thrice. No, when he comes, yeah. some people won't know he has come. Yeah, that's where. That, you know, that, that, that's, that, yeah, that's what I'm still I'm going into. That's where going yeah. to be, yeah. When he comes a second time, some people will not know. People that won't know, it will be to them like a thief in the night. Who 
surprise. But people that know, it's not a surprise. Amen? Amen. Matthew chapter 24. Say Matthew chapter 24. So, rapture, I believe in rapture, but, him, but my rapture is taking place now. I've been caught up, been caught up. Every day I've been caught up. As I behold him, I'm becoming like him. I'm hearing the trumpet, the sound of the trumpet. I've heard the first one, I've heard the second one. I'm still hearing it until I hear, before the sounding of the seventh trumpet, they said the mystery of God, the mystery of God in me, Christ in me. He said it shall be finished. So I'm hearing it. Uh, I'm not going to go on. Remember, uh, brother, uh, brother, uh, brother, uh, brother, no, brother Noah. No, no. He didn't escape. He was here, but he was in the midst of the turbulence. The, the rain, the rain was falling, but he was in the ark. He was protected. He was protected. So the, the raptor they say on the other side, they said, okay, you take off. When you take off, God will send bombs. All the air will be burning. The church will be in the air. No, no, that, that's not what the Bible says. He said, God come with uh, what? 10,000 10, of the saints. So he's coming with the saints. He's not coming alone. By the, by the time he's, he's fully present, when everybody sees him, he said, all eyes shall see him. By the time he's coming with the, uh, all eyes see him, he's already with many, many membered body. Amen? To distinction. Okay? So at the time he's coming, he's coming with 10,000. He's not coming alone. But there is a time he comes as a thief in the night for those that are not watching. So we can say that's a quiet coming, but he's there performing something, doing something, which we see in Matthew chapter 24. This Matthew 24 is very full and extensive. But when we understand it, we understand it. So let me go back to coming. So here he said, what is the, what shall this thing be? What is the sign of thy presence? And of the end of what? The world is not going to end. The end of the age. The end of this age, this, this period of time, because at the end of the age, there's two. The end of the age ends, then the age of the millennium, the Christ age, starts. Amen? Mm -hmm. These uh, times of the Gentiles. Times of the Gentiles, then the end of so the, the stone was cut out with our hands uh -huh, and smote that image. So that system of thing ends. The beast out of the sea is taken. The beast out of the earth is taken. And what happens to them? You cast them into the lake of fire. Uh -huh. Satan is bound and restrained for a thousand years. The end of the age. End of the age. So it's the, the day of God's vengeance. The end of this age. Say, so, and of the end of the So, but let's focus on the sign, sign of his presence. Amen? 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 Amen. Amen. Verse 27. That prison doesn't refer to the coming of the Holy Spirit. No, no, yes, <laughs> that's what we're saying. The coming of the Holy Spirit is different because he, he, they were talking about, right, coming of the Holy Spirit was just uh, 50 days after Pentecost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it comes to, but this coming is talking about the second coming. Amen? When Christ comes a second time, it's not unto sin, sin but unto salvation. Okay, so it's coming not to, to it's coming to bring the fullness. Uh -huh, that's how we look at it. It's coming to bring the fullness. It's coming to change you. It's coming to make you immortal. Uh -huh. When he said, when we, when he can, we shall see him as he is. So it's not talking, they see him as he is, not talking about uh, uh, the Holy Spirit. He said, when we see him as he is, we shall be like, like him. So that's the second coming. And if you read these scriptures, that will quote you, you now see it's, it, it gives more understanding, more clarity. So it's important. So take, I think the, the coming there, the presence coming, it appears 11 times in the New Testament. 11 or 10 times, I'll check. Uh, no, no, uh, 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 before you come to me, he had. Uh, uh, Mother of God, uh, I promise you, those scriptures you sent me uh, take time during the week to go through them. Yes. Then hopefully, when we see again, I'll yes. make my submission. Uh, it will be based uh, on my understanding. Yes. I quickly went to the scripture where they talked about the day of the Lord being like a thief in the night. Mm. And I think it's in 1st of Zephaniah 5. It may mm. appear in other mm. places, but it said, let me quickly read. It said, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For ye yourself know perfectly well that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. 
Now look at what it says. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon them as travel upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Say, but ye brethren are not in darkness, that day, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of night or darkness. But, but my understanding here is this. Because we have been perfected, because we have been prepared, awaiting the day of the Lord, when Christ will come, it, it will not be a surprise because we are being prepared. Yes, okay. But Let me, the I, unbelievers, yes. because they are not... Um, they are not waiting because they are in darkness it will take them by surprise because the Bible says here that they will be saying peace, prosperity yes. and suddenly destruction will come upon them yes, but, 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 but who is Christ coming to the second time? It's us now so, but he's not coming to he's not coming to the unbeliever so through, I think where we are getting the so, like, like misunderstanding yes. where he said that Christ is coming, like the second coming is more than once. No, the because second, no, no, I didn't say that. I said, no, it's once. But when he comes, he stays there. It's not that he's still coming, coming. When he comes, he stays there and he's there all the way, all the way. It's a time period. So when he comes a second time, he's not, when he comes, that's why I said the best interpretation is coming and remaining. He stays. That's why we say the presence of God. When the presence of God reveals a lot of things, one of it is that he turned his attention towards not the world. Who cares about the world? He turned his attention towards the church and built and transformed and built and transformed until all the cockroach, no spots, no wrinkles. They stand firm and they become like him. So that presence stays, 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 stays. And the word used, the Greek word used when he comes to reveal himself is epiphany. Fenoe, he appears to them and they become like him. But before that appearing, if God appeared to us now, ah, we just die, die. Because there are still limitations. Of it. it changed and changed and changed and changed and changed. And when it comes, he said, we, it, it transforms us. We become like him. Then when we become like him, he now uses us to accomplish those things we talked about, the Israelites. That by the time he's dealing with the world, that's when there will be turbulence. They will say, ah, ah, people are not on the horse. He's not on the horse and riding. Ah, ah. I say, oh, uh, bro, uh, government of the day, you guys, you are messing up. There will be no rain in this place. You walk away. The, the ministry of Elijah, the ministry of Moses, fully, uh, 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 but our attention will be to the church and ministering. They kept. God will be breaking for, man child will be breaking for everywhere. <laughs> you understand? So the first thing, the coming of the Lord, is not that he, he, when he comes the second time, he stays. But what we are saying is that that coming, what are the characteristics? If we know the characteristics, we can look up and say, ah, Jerusalem has been delivered. Hmm, that's an indication, good indication. And what is happening in the church? Uh, you understand? I understand uh, what you are So, but the day of the Lord is the time when God judges the world. Yeah, I understand what you are saying, mm. that, but where I have issues mm. is that Christ will come. I believe, I believe well, from previous yes. understanding yes. that Christ is going to come once, when I mean once, and that day is the day of the Lord. That is the day Christ is coming to judge the world, okay. save his okay. own. Okay. That's my understanding. Fine, fine, fine. Fine, fine. I'm open to new No, no, no. Like, I, I need to read time. three verses. <laughs> so let's Three verses. Once you understand that three verses, yes. it opens up treasures. To know, ah, they did. Yeah, these, yes. these things are not, a, it's not a one time thing. Yes. Uh huh. It tells you, uh, but it, when it comes a second time, in, in Matthew, go and read Matthew. Prior to, pra to his second coming, yes. I believe that. The church is going to be perfected. The ministry of Elijah is going to take full effect. But that these things will happen through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, not Christ coming in person. Okay. That's okay. my understanding. Okay, so we'll see it. We'll see it. No problem. Uh, honey? Yeah. I just wanted to quickly chip in that. Oh, we to make a distinction between the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And um, if you look at the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 14, it says there was less than 13. Oh. In both ye also believe. Trusted. So Sorry, let me get to the scripture so I can follow you. 
Press call it, yeah? Yeah, yeah, until. 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 So, so the first thing is a down payment. But the Holy Spirit cannot bring the fullness of life. Christ has to come. Okay. Please, let me just give a quick Let me just say, you know me and background before he reads the scriptures. So, our brother has been living to say that Christ comes, that Christ comes and remains. If you take all the scriptures in the New Testament about the coming of the Lord, what you'll find is that if you break them down and look at the original words, they fit within this coming and remain. The Bible says that a, a, a day with the Lord is like a thousand years. Hardly ever when the Bible talks about the day of the Lord is it, got up about one day. It's often a period if you look at scripture. So all the things, that which you have said, that which you have begun to say, if you take, if you think of it as a span, but in that span, Hallelujah. a lot of things are going to happen. And all of the when you look at first Thessalonians, you look at all the scriptures, you know, scriptures that refer to the second advent. In fact, that's how some brethren come. They say the second advent because it's a time. But that advent begins at a point. That point is not the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's what the sister said. That advent begins. That's what our brother was trying to labor to establish. He says, you know, when the times of the Gentiles are completed, God gave some signs that it's going to come about. To indicate that you know when that advent begins. Again. And when that advent begins, there's a heavy presence of the Lord. Intensified. Intensified because he's accomplishing the things that pertain to his second coming. There's the, that which is done quietly. And our brother will explain. Probably he won't finish today. It's a long process. There's that which happens quietly and secretly. There's that which will happen evidently for the world to see when they say peace and whatever, and suddenly some things will begin to happen and those things will topple everything. And there's that which will have to do with the rule of Christ. But it's something that begins at a point which the Lord Jesus gave the sign for, and then it progresses until the kingdom is all subdued and God is all in all. So that's just background before he begins to now give the, the details, right? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, anyway, I, I want to say that when we go back at home to check about the coming, it's good to go to the Greek translation. Because I don't know if in your Bible, but in my French Bible, it's the same word. It's coming, 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 coming. So when you are studying, it makes you a little bit confused. But when you go back to the Greek translation, we will see where it says, Parosia and where he say Epiphania, so that you can really understand. You know, it's a little key I want to give when you go back to read, go to to see where is Parosia and where is Epiphania. It will help a lot. Amen. Amen. So just bear with me here. Uh, let's. Uh, I know you have a question. Coming. So let's bear with me this So let's read the scriptures. Um, we have read Matthew chapter 25, 24, verse 3. The word used there is the presence. What is a sign? Uh -huh. Sign. What are the things I can look at and say, ah, Christ has come. Yes. Okay? So that's the question. So in verse 27, he said, so in 25, he now answered the question. Okay, in verse 26, he said, wherefore, if ye shall say, they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert. Go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. For as the lightning shineth out of the east, and shineth even to the west, so shall also the presence of the Son of Man be. Amen. So, this, how do I know Christ is here? It tells me from this scripture that it's not boom, suddenly. And this one will not be true lightning. Lightning doesn't move from 
It doesn't. Have you seen any lightning that moves? No. The lightning here is, a, is the sun. The sun. It coming from out of the east. The sun what? Children, the sun set from where? Rises. 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 Sorry. Thank you. It rises from what? The east. And where does it set? West. That's what he's saying. So, in the presence of God, he said, he, that's the first one he uses. If you go check the word par parousia, the first one he said is that when he started wanting to explain the sign of his coming, the sign of his presence, he said, as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even to the west, so shall the presence of the Son of Man be. There he's not talking about Holy Spirit. Me. As the son of man, Christ revealed, saying it by his word. Say, as the son of man be. So he's telling them right now, do not panic. Oh. There's a time period involved. Amen? Uh, My understanding of this scripture that is on the board is that his coming cannot be hidden. Just hold on, that is not here. Therefore, as the lightning coming from the east and shall it unto the west, so shall the coming also, he, 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 also, also shall yeah, come in what, what I understand is that his coming is not in secret. He's talking about uh, yes, in secret to who now? Brightness that you cannot find. So, so, to who now? To who? We're talking about Christ here. No, the, to, oh, oh, not in secret. Who is now? Who is the people Perceive, not yes. perceiving it? Remember, they spoke. God spoke to Jesus Christ, well, and they, they, they said it was thundering. The people was not the reference. Yes. Today. Okay. What's the reference? Said, okay. So, is shall the coming of the Son of Man be? So, so if, if we go with that, yes, for those that are awake, because it's going to come, if you, we are still going further, you now see the thief in the night and all that. It's there, but it's only people that are watchful, that are awake, okay? So, but we are talking about time here. Yeah? For a, a time we know it's, it's not sudden. It's not a, 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 a lightning just boom and everybody knows it's No, it's a time period from the east to the west. We can explain what he's talking about. That, uh, but the, the last, let's leave it that right now. Okay. Then let's go to 30, well, 36. He's referencing a people here. Like uh, because, it, uh, okay, go to, go to, to 28. 28. 28. Let's go to 28. So shall also the presence of the storm have and where also the carcasses, the body, there the eagles will be gathered. So as at when it comes, there's a mighty intensifying work upon the people that are called eagles. And it's not sudden. Because there's a eagles, ah, eagle, eagle, they chop now, they chop. It's not sudden, they are chopping, they are eating, they are eating. There's a massive intensifying work. By the time it's in the east, it brings them from the east. And it, from, by the, it brings them from the east and takes them to the west. Uh, my brother, you, you, you with me? Yeah, if you see the pic, picture of the tabernacle, the, the, the gate, the gate is where it's called the east. The, the fullness of God is in the west. So God brings them from weaknesses. Ah, at the time of the end, Malachi says, there shall be fruitfulness. There shall be healing. It will bring forth healing. So now we see limitation. Look here, look here. There's complaining in our street. There's failure here, failure here. But as it, the intensity of his light shines brighter and brighter and brighter, a people are feasting and dining and whining. Okay. Matthew 24 uh, is full. But let's go to 36. When you refer to the tabernacle, yeah. you say it's taking them from the east to the west. west yes. So that's how the tabernacle. That's it. Right. So it's bringing them to the full fullness. 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 Yeah, that's as people are traveling. That, uh -huh. If you don't travel, you won't experience it. Yes, you have to move. You have to look into the church and see a body of people moving into fullness. Mm. That identifies, that's a sign that he has come. That's right. Sign. Much of sign. sign. Now, because the Bible says God enters the, uh, the temple through the prospect of the east. Mm. Um, if, you, if you go to one of the scriptures, mm. you know, is it Ezekiel? Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's, how, want to know, that's how God comes into the temple. Now, we might be having a little bit challenges, confusion, all of us are. But the Bible says a little here, a little there. 
Nobody just understands one time. Mm. Else that person will be super, <laughs> superman, you know. And nobody is born big. We all learn. So the thing is this: Jesus made a statement. I know where I am. I know where I am from, and I know where I am going to. Mm -hmm. So that gives us a picture of understanding revelation to know where we are going to. And once we find this, we can now fit in into that revelation. But for now, once it's a little bit hazy, it's difficult to put these things into perspective. But as a word comes like this, a little here, a little there, and we do our own study, it will just open up. As he said, one day we just, oh, this is what brother was saying. This is what is, you see, scripture will just be confirming scripture. And you know, you will see things in the light of the Holy Spirit. That's how it works. Now, it, now the problem is timing. When is this time? When I began to understand this message, I said, what are these people talking about? You know, the, the timing they are putting to this thing is wrong. You know, but eventually, as the Lord opens your eyes, you begin to see, have spiritual insight into the scriptures, and everything begins to fall in place. But it's gradual, it's not a one year thing. It's not, but God keeps opening. As one God opens one door, another door opens, another door opens, and that's how we understand. Amen. 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 So let's read this, and uh, we've read it before, and read it before, and read it before, but let's read it in the context of the presence of the Lord. So 36, 36 to 36 to 44. 36 to 44. Then we will now quickly go back. Uh, let's read together, please. But of that day and that hour, no, no man no, not the angels of God, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also be the presence of the Son of Man be. For in the days that went before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away so shall also the presence of the Son of Man be. Then, 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 who did they take away? Now the people that are not believers. It's not that son. It's, and took them away, verse 39. And took them away. Okay, verse 40 says, Then shall two be in the field. One shall be taken, the other left. Two shall be grinding at the mill. One shall be taken and another left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what your father, father not, not come. But know this, that if the good man of the house has known what watch the father, the thief will come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Amen? Amen. In verse 37, he tells us that how do you know the presence of this Son of Man? Because he has told us that he's going to come. People does not know. No man knows it. Verse 36. But he said, The Father only. But he said, As in the days of Noah, so also shall be the presence of the Son of Man. Amen? Amen. So, how do I know? Oh, in 37. How do I know of the presence of God? Ah, I look at what Noah was doing. As in that illustration, who, who, is, who is Noah? Noah is the son of man. He's the one building the ark. Amen? So in his presence, in his presence, you will know that there's a building of the ark. He's doing this. He's good because there's going to be a flood. It's, it's ongoing, right? Yes, right now. There's going to be a flood. And the Bible said the flood that is going to take place now is not water. It's going to shake the heavens and the earth. By what? By fire. There's going to be the day of vengeance. It's going to happen. But before it's happened, the ark must be ready. Hallelujah. If the ark is not ready, the deluge cannot come. If the ark is not ready, there will be no flood. No matter a, a prophet of doom, no matter what he says, the church must be ready. 
The man child must be better from the woman. Are we getting it? So that's a present. The, the, the word here is the present of the Son of Man. In this time, in this preaching of scripture, it's there. It's the Noah. It's the Noah. It's not that it is coming. It's already there. Building the ark. Amen. Pitching within and without. I'm sorry, I'm a No, no problem. No problem. It's just that. Uh, yes. I'm finding it difficult to maintain what I have before. Yes. When you say the Noah mm. refers to. Yes, Christ. that's what it says now. As in the days of Noah. So also shall be the son of man be. You know, the reason, yeah, the what reason I'm asking is yes. story. We know there was a physical Noah previously. Oh, yes. Right yes. yes. And Jesus Christ is a type of that Noah. There's a physical Moses. Jesus Christ is a greater okay, so Moses. In this case, we safely perceive. No, no, it's, a, it's a prophetic. Yeah, it's a I mean, spiritual insight. Yeah, it's a prophetic. It literally, I yes. assume they are making reference to the previous experience. Yes, of yes. The physical Noah. That That's it. But they say, as it was then, something like that is going to happen now. Yeah. But that Noah that was then, is, is, is the Noah that we are now seeing now is Jesus Christ coming a second time. Hallelujah. I think the major problem is the way I interpret scripture. Because yes. when they made reference to Noah here, yes. what they were making reference to was the events that took place in Noah's time. That's right. That, I agree time with you. Yes. They were marrying, they were feasting, mm -hmm. they were enjoying. I, 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 but, but what was Noah doing? Noah wasn't feasting. Noah was building the ark. That's it. So the reason they made the reference yes. was because of the events that were happening, which was the feasting and the marriage. Yes. And, 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 and the build of ark was an event. was an event. If the, if the ark wasn't built, there will be no rain. There will never be rain. Because, the scripture says because God wants to protect. The ark was completed. Yes. Before the rain. Came. Rain. No, but actually, if you go to the next verse. Let's read it again. Go to the next verse. Okay. Uh, let's read it again. Go to the next verse. 38. So the Lord shows those two. He says, as it was. So that was the picture. Okay, use that picture to understand now. Then he enumerates the things. He talks about the eating and drinking, marrying and drinking. That's, the, that's 38. And then he also talks about Noah entering into the ark. ark. That is one of the events what that is. 39. 39. 39. Exactly. So that's what our brother is explaining. That aspect of it. So yes, what the people were doing was relevant. What okay. the marrying and living in marriage, not being ignorant or oblivious or refusing to listen. What Noah, what Noah was doing was also relevant because the Lord also mentions it. Okay. Right. Yes. So that that's Noah entered the ark. Yes. So okay. Noah built the ark and entered the ark. So that's. Right. that's and one of the things Noah was doing, and one of the things Jesus Christ is doing, is in verse forty. He said, "Then, at that period of time, so right now, Jesus Christ is taking people into the ark. There are some people already left. He's doing it right now. Then she shall be in the field, field of ministry of teaching. God is separating them." And taking them into the ark. Remember, Noah went out now. It was separate, taking them. Two, and one child is taking, and the other left. Uh, well, it's ark now. He took them into the ark. Then, verse two. Two shall be in the grinding mill of ministry. One shall be taking, the other left. He said, Watch therefore. Verse 42. Watch therefore. For ye know not the hour. The Lord comments. That means he is there. Yes. Amen. Yes. He's there. He comes. People that are not watchful, we surprise. Ah, a thief. But people that are watchful, that's why in this time, just be a watchman. Watchman, stay upon the mark. I say, the mark of the high calling of, calling of God in Christ. Be a watchman. Then when you are a watchman, you see, you see when it's coming. You see the event, you see the Holy Spirit, you see all sorts of things. And when you see, you are becoming like him. He said, so so it's, it's in that context of saying he has come and he's doing something. It's not sudden that they say sudden. Ah, it's sudden, boom, people get. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes, but the final transformation of a man from. from uh, uh, mortal to immortality is instant. Instant. Same thing as you are born again. You, know you, are, you believe on Lord Jesus Christ, you are born again. But in between of God bringing you to, to that place where they purchase possession. This body, purchase possession. God will take it for himself. He has given me the earnest. But me, no, 
in due time, he said, the, the body in the heaven will be clothed with the body of all. That's sudden. <laughs> but, but the daily transformation, Paul came to a point. It just came to a point. Ah, bro, if I'm here, I'm here for you. But I have a crown is reserved for me. My name is on it. It's reserved for me. He knew, he consciously knew uh, that he would give it to him on that day. Not only on that day to me, but unto those that look for his appearing. That look for his appearing. So there's the watchers, people in this, uh, uh, Matthew chapter 25. There was a foolish virgin, there was a wise virgin, there was the watchers. They're saying, ah, behold the bridegroom. That means they have seen the bridegroom. And when they saw the bridegroom, what happened to them? They become like the bridegroom. They become like him. So behold the bridegroom. Comment. They'll be ministering to all the other, the man child ministering to the woman. Say, behold the bridegroom. Go ye out to meet him. So, in, in the presence of God, there's other scripture we can use in Thessalonians. But these scriptures, you can't, you can't, you can't explain it in 30 minutes. Uh -huh. So, in, in the coming of, uh, coming or the presence of God, the word presence is that he, when he comes, he stays. And start doing something. Simple thing he's doing is that he's building the ark. He's fashioning his people. Because if those people are not complete, there will be no judgment upon the earth. Forget uh, somebody appearing on uh, any of the TV programs and say, uh, the world is going to end uh, in put calendar. And say, no, no, no. It's, it's, uh, Yes. But yes. look at the ones that were kept. In the midst of the desolation and destruction taking place, some people are kept. And those are the only ones in the ark. So it, it, when all this type of sharing comes, it makes us fear. Fear in the sense that it makes me quiver and say, God, I must be in that ark. The ceiling that is needed for me to remain in that ark, the work that you're doing of transformation, taking me from the east the West, continue with Lord. Mm. My mind must be sealed and must be like Jesus Christ. Because if you are not part of the earth, God forbid, it is terrible. It is terrible. The great tribulation that is coming out, there was once I was sharing with my youth for a couple of months, and we kept looking and looking and looking and looking at the things that will happen in that time. It is not fun. It is not. And it will only happen to the people that dwell on the earth. But when you have already been consummated by God and we are now God to change and transform us, we need because, you know, he kept talking about two classes of the sons of um, 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 Abraham. Yes, two classes. Those that are the stars of the heavens above and those that are like the stars, I mean, sand upon the earth. We want to be like the stars of heaven above because all this turbulence and destruction that will come at that time, 
when the ark is already shot. A time will come when the ark is shot. But all those that, uh, that, that are not in the ark, the tribulation is not fun. So when we know these glories and the beauties of God, of what God has in store for us, what do we do? It makes us quiver. And what manner of men ought we to be? You understand? These things, I continue to purify myself as he is pure. When we see all these things, it's not to just tell us these things so that we feel cold. No, it makes me go back and fast and pray, God, this nature in me that continues to make me show, exhibit this and that, that is not of God, deal with it. I must put on that body. And it is only those that seek for it that it will come to. So let's continue to know that and, and be reminded, it's not just in the by and by, uh, when, when, when the trumpet shall. No, it is already sounding now. And as the trumpet sounds, what does it accomplish? It brings about a change in you and in me. You are, we understand, right? So that presence of the Lord is a duration of time. It's con he continues to walk and walk and walk and walk in us, in us until he, that the door is shut. Until we all come in and we are like him. Praise God. Stop, help me write the questions now. That was your question? I know. Later, bring the question so that you can write it down. What does vengeance mean? What does vengeance mean? Okay. Then, um, when you, you, you said um, one will be taken and the other left. Will be left, do you mean the one will, um, the one will be like disappear? Okay. Okay. There. Okay. So you want to know one will be taken, one and that left. Whether the, the one will disappear. Yes? And when you said that the, the Gentiles will rule over the world? They are ruling over the world now, but their rule is ending because God wants the church, me and you, to rule. Uh, because the Bible says we are kings, right? If you are a king, that means you must rule now. If you are a king, you are, you just, sitting down, are you just sitting down, you're sitting down in your house? You must, uh -huh, you must have a kingdom. So. Uh, so uh, the questions are pretty straightforward. The first question was, what's vengeance? Okay, uh, Caris, want to help us? What's vengeance? Judgment. He said, Caris said, uh, vengeance is judgment. You know what's judgment? Okay, judgment means uh, somebody did something wrong, and at the end of the day, after trial, okay, he said to execute upon the, the judgment written. You have the trial. Say, ah, you. Because you have done this, God told Satan. Because you have done this, that means it, it, it was clear something was expressed. So you know those judge. Yeah, judge, not those judge that sit down. They will hear. They will hear the good. The other one say uh, the bad and all that. Then they will now say, boom, you did something wrong. <clears throat> Go to jail. Uh -huh. So before that, so judgment is to execute punishment. Thank you. To execute punishment. Okay. The third, second question was that ah. That scripture said one will be taken, one will be left. Okay, let's, let's know the context. It was when we were talking about the ark, right? Remember, as in the days of Noah, the days of the son of, son of man, Jesus Christ. So, he said, one will be taken, one will be left. So, what happened during Noah's time? Did he carry all the animals and put inside the ark? Uh -huh. Did he carry all the human beings and put inside the ark? Uh -huh. So, when he go and select, he said, okay, you come with me. You stay you understand? Uh, that's what that's the separation. So the one that was left behind, did it disappear? No, it did disappear now. <laughs> Remember Noah? Noah went to take people into the ark, right? Yes? Okay. So when he was taking people, the one that he took came into the ark. Okay? The other one was left, right? Did the one left, did it disappear? Uh -huh. So you understand? Clear. Clear. <laughs> The Lord bless us. Amen. The Lord bless us. Amen. Uh, any questions? So we disappear here. I think what, the reason why she asked the question is that when we say one will be taken, it's uh -huh. like one will be flying. No, 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 no. So, no, that's why when you're explaining the scriptures, uh -huh, there's all ideas somewhere there. You go back to the scripture. Go look, look at the context. When you look at the context and she gets it, if somebody tells him tomorrow that somebody will disappear, so no. You know, you know, it's not there. 
No, I think that issue of disappearing is where Paul was talking about some of the part of it. That, that's right. So, so when he said it, I didn't want to bring those thoughts into the what it, our discussion is. Sure. I didn't want to bring it in. I said, okay, let's leave. Okay, disappear. Let me look at it in, the, in this context. But with that, yes. so the only way to deal with force, falsehood is to know the truth. The only way to deal with falsehood is to know the truth. Once you know the truth, all those false things will just fall aside. One of the things God said concerning the beast out of this, the earth, is that he said they have made lies their refuge. He said their table is full of vomit. They are make lies their refuge. So it's good to examine scriptures. Say, God, give me understanding. You compare scripture with scripture, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's brighter. May Lord grant us help. Amen. Lord grant us understanding. Amen. Amen. Let us begin to respond to this message. Um, ask the Lord to grant you understanding. Yeah, that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. Every false doctrine that has been perpetrated by the enemy to bring men and women into bondage that let them be taken away.